Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching the Big Bang Theory to see how scientifically accurate the engineering scenes really are. Okay, I'm zeroing out the electroosmotic flow rate in the microfluidic channel. Nicely done, Howard. Whenever you hear anyone say that I'm zeroing out something, all that means is you're filtering it. Like, it's just a really fancy way of using the word filter. Gentlemen, we need to stop immediately. What's wrong? I am looking at the math, and I think we can make the device between 8 and 10% smaller. That's great, but the Air Force approved the specs. We're good to go. Yeah, it doesn't need to be smaller. Shame on you. <laughs> that is one of the biggest differences between engineers and physicists. Because to a theoretical physicist, in theory, you, could, you can really, anything is possible. They don't really have to think about money, or customers, or making anything. As an engineer, when your customer comes to you and they say, we want our final product to be XYZ dimensions, they're not going to say, but if you can make it smaller, we'll pay you more. Like, that, that's not how that works. An engineer's job is to create a product that the customer wants from their given specifications. If you can reach all of their specs and have it exactly the way they want it to, then you're done. <laughs> Move on. It's not going to yield you any higher results, or it's not gonna really going to benefit you at all. To say that, yeah, we did everything you told us to do, and then more. It's like, well, they, they don't care about the more. All they want is what they paid you to do. So there's really, like, once you achieved it, just move on. Just don't stay on this project. You have more things to do in life. What's this? Oh, uh, nothing. Just some math we don't need. This is a different approach. Are you trying to get the guidance system even smaller? It's just a... Uh... Theory. Well, it's not even worked out. Oh. <laughs> I want this. <laughs> uh, but we've already met the agreed upon specs. Going smaller would <laughs> require weeks worth of new computations. So get the kid with the two shirts to do it. <laughs> this is extremely rare, highly unlikely, and for a prototype, definitely not going to happen. So in this situation, their customer seems to be the military, and when they ask you to create something, they're going to put a deadline to it. So if your customer is going to come in, and they're going to say, okay, we want something completely different, it's like, all right, well, you're going to have to give us way more time. But maybe, I don't know if the military is going to necessarily sell this, but if you're making consumer products, you can't just continue to optimize it until you've reached a level of extreme perfection because then it'll never get done. Even if you can create this same product that's eight to 10% smaller, and in this case, if it's smaller, it seems to be more efficient, then that's great, but then you're never gonna meet the original deadline and that's gonna set back many other things, for consumer products mostly. That's why Apple will release a new iPhone every single year, and from the year prior, it, you could make an argument that it's eight to 10% better, but if they just didn't release an iPhone, for three years, they will go out of business. So you have to continue to make new products, you need to innovate, but you can't just stop because you found a way that makes it better or smaller or faster. Like there's always gonna be areas to innovate. For prototypes specifically, what you're looking for is primarily that it works. Then you're gonna go through alpha tests and beta tests and make the adjustments so that you can perfect your product and then put it into implementation. Well, I would love to help you, but since I discovered the satisfaction of working with my hands on a train engine, I don't think I can go back to theory. I'm an engineer now. <laughs> That's actually the main reason that I personally chose not to pursue theoretical physics as opposed to engineering, because in theoretical physics, they will explain to you what could happen if maybe under some situations in space. Whereas an engineer will say, this will happen if you do this to it, and here's the result. Like, an engineer actually does things. The theoretical physicist will talk about what might happen. Come on, you know you're not leaving physics. Why are you doing this? Leonard, in the world of theoretical physics, you never finish. So much is unprovable. But when I was studying that railway guide, it was so tangible and so satisfying that something just clicked. Then it clacked. <laughs> then it clicked, then it clacked, to click, a clack, a clickety clack, and here we are! Whoa! Woo! 
there's really nothing more that needs to be said right there. Just do engineering. It's worth it. This episode was really fun. It was a little more unrealistic when given the, the train engine and the living room situation, but overall, I had a really fun time watching this episode. Like, the comedy is always great, and the engineering and the science scenes in this TV show in general, and this episode, are pretty accurate. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything else that you want me to watch and comment it over in the future, just put it in the comments below. And until next time, stay fresh, stay golden.